This is the first building in Faust Park's historic village, whose story is tied directly to black history. It was built in 1894 in Chesterfield, but only after pressure and a lawsuit by the black community. After it was built, it served black students until the 1950s. Doris Frazier, who turns 92 this year, was a guest of honor at the dedication. When she was 19, she came to this one-room schoolhouse as a substitute teacher. Can you imagine a teacher coming in, sitting at the desk, 20 kids in the classroom from age six to 14, trying to keep their attention? But what did you feel when you walked back into the completed schoolroom? I said, thank God this is over. You know, a lot of people, including me, they haven't associated black history with this part of the county. I know. But let me tell you, sir, there were a lot of blacks in this community of Chesterfield. That's the story that will be told here. But there's another story about why and how the Parks Department worked so hard to bring it here. Our first visit was a year ago, when we met with park preservationist Molly Butterworth at the future site of the schoolhouse. We do have a spot, and it's really an amazing spot because not only is it right in the middle of our historic village, it's adjacent to a school built in the same period for here. white students, correct, the Alt Schoolhouse, which used to stand on Ranky Road, very close in time period to the African Schoolhouse we'll be erecting here on this spot. This is a 1931 photograph of the students who went to the school on Wild Horse Creek Road in Chesterfield. It was built in 1894. African Schoolhouse Number 4 would serve black students until the end of school segregation in the 1950s. Then it was turned into a garage, and the log structure was hidden inside new siding and interior walls. The county parks folks located it years ago had their eye on it, but it was, after all, somebody's garage. The building was sold, and the gentleman that bought it was going to tear it down, um, and he actually was very willing to donate it to the park. All they had to do then was take it apart, move it, put it back together. But remember, it is what they do. So the modern era siding was removed to reveal the original interior log walls. And then each piece inside and outside was mapped and tagged and not with post-it notes. Parks educator Micah Kornblum showed us how the metal tags are stamped using a system of numbers and letters giving each piece's location and orientation. There's side A, which is the front. There's side B, which would be... When everything was tagged and diagrammed, the schoolhouse was taken apart and the pieces stored in the Faust Park barn. Well, here are the logs for the schoolhouse. These here. are the originals These here? are the originals here and back here. Tag B, this is tag B4, so that's the right-hand wall, and it's the um, fourth log up. Here, too, is one of the discoveries that brings African school number four to life. It had been hidden for generations behind the garage wall. That plywood came down, and this is what I saw. Wow. And I'm a retired school teacher, and this is thrilling. To, to see this? Uh-huh. Wow. Yes. It's been protected. It has a special uh, spray on it so that um, the moisture can't get to it. But once it's inside the building, it will be doubly protected. Yeah. Yeah. But so much more work had to be done because some of the pieces of the old building were gone or in bad shape. Woodworking volunteers came to recreate doors and windows. But when it comes to replacing damaged or missing logs, well, that's a very different kind of job. But there's park staff who have those old-timey skills. And we're really expecting, hoping to have it erected by late summer of this year. Well, they didn't hit that deadline, but by September of last year, you could see the progress they were making. Work was delayed for a time because of another project that popped up. Two log homes at Conway Park in Creve Coeur became available and needed to be disassembled and moved right away. But work on the schoolhouse continued and we were back on a cold day in November when volunteers from Green Trails United Methodist Church showed up to do some chinking, filling in the gaps between the logs with wood scraps, after which mortar would be applied. This community involvement was the idea of their pastor. Oh, yes. 
Yes, as soon as I told them the story. And what I've always told my folks is when you have a black pastor, every month is Black History Month. So this isn't something we're just doing for a season or for a cause. It is really something we're deeply rooted in, trying to bridge the gap between races. So it's very important to us. Take a good look because this is not what the old schoolhouse actually looked like. The logs were covered by walls inside and siding outside. You can just make that out in the old photograph. The siding back then gave the school a more finished look. And project leader Jesse Francis says that's one of the reasons the building survived. If you start exposing logs and you don't keep the weather off of them, they're going to rot faster. Interior work would then be completed, including reinstallation of chalk rails and that surviving chalkboard lesson, which would get a protective covering. Of uh, plexiglass in front of it. By March, African American Schoolhouse Number no. Four was ready for dedication. After the speeches and the ribbon cutting, people lined up to squeeze into the little room where hundreds of black children had been educated over the decades, trying to imagine what it must have been like for those kids. Curtis Johnson didn't have to imagine. He was one of them. So this is the first time I've been back in the school since 44, really. You know. You bring back memories? A whole lot, you know. <laughs> but you don't realize how small it is, I guess because you are small, you know. Yeah, you don't realize it was this small, you know, but you figure, how all these kids get in this one little bitty room? But we did. You know? and that's one of the things we want to do, is anybody connected with this school that has a story about it, we want to get that documented, because to me, that's as important as the structure itself, is the people and what they did when they went there. For Living St. Louis, I'm Jim Kircher.